Right, so I was asked yesterday um, if I could have only one item, would I use an amp or a modeler of some form? Um, now I think most of you on this channel probably know that I'm quite an extensive HX Stomp user. I've got a Helix you don't normally see in shot, but I use that. I've got a Kemper. Um, but by the other side, I've got a lot of Mesa Boogie amp. So this is kind of a difficult question for me. So my short answer is that I like to use modeling either at home in the studio as a convenience or if I've got a lugger PA to a gig um, and there's not much room in the car, I've got to take another person, that sort of thing. In that case, I will just take out the HX stomp and that. However, if I really want to try and enjoy a gig, an amp is generally what I'll use. Um, that's the short answer. Um, but I guess for a lot of us, our playing is mixed up between playing at home and live anyway, like it is for me. I mean, the split for me is that I practice a lot more at home and uh, film these kind of videos a lot more at home. I guess the majority of my time is spent with a modeler of some kind. But if I had to choose between which one, I guess I'm going to have to just do some positives and negatives and see what shakes out at the end. So, one positive that I like about having a modeler like the HX Stomp or the Helix or the Kemper is that you have a built-in tuner ready to go right away. Um, this is something that the Iridium didn't have, Strymon Iridium, and that's something that I kind of miss because I don't keep, because of my modeling uh, background, I don't particularly have tuners lying around. I think I've got one in the car for gigs. I'm not even sure where that one is though. Um, so having a tuner on hand ready to go at all times is kind of a real benefit. I know it sounds kind of trivial, but for me, I want to just be in the moment and try and get the guitar in tune and just get playing and recording straight away. That's kind of how I am. So that's one benefit for modelers. Now here's one benefit for amps and one negative for modelers. When I've been on a gig, I gigged the Kemper quite a lot uh, a few years ago or one or two years ago and I can count on maybe two fingers the times that I actually had a gig that I enjoyed that a sound man didn't ruin for me if it was an in-ear gig. Um, now this is not necessarily the fault of the modeler but it does show you kind of um, if you're going direct to the sound man and they're sending you back stuff in your ears it's really 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 easy for them to completely uh, derail your gig um, you know with low cuts up to you know 200 300 and with the compounding effect of having it in ears um, it can really quickly start to sound like bees um, the benefit of having a real amp touch another real amp is that that's less prone to happening um, so that's kind of one area where a real amp I think wins. Another area that I think a real amp wins is that you can plug it in and within a short amount of time, maybe no time of tweaking, you'll have pretty much what the core tone of that amp and the core vibe of what that amp is um, and you'll know roughly what that amp is going to sound like. Uh, with a modeler it's taken me you know a, a significant amount of time and a learning curve with other modelers as well before I've got to the stage where I think I can get tones that I really like as much as an amp out of an HX Stomp or a Helix or a Kemper Kemper less so with that learning curve but there's other consideration the other thing with an amp is you don't get this thing of people selling presets for amps um, obviously I do make my presets available at a small price I mean there's other people out there that do sell them for considerably more um, and the Kemper profiling industry is a huge thing but when you've already paid I don't know what is a Kemper now 16, 1700 pounds and then you add on top of that uh, the cost of buying profiles from third-party 
people uh, like Tone Junkie for example who I do demos for I think you quickly start to ramp up the cost um, whereas with a, an amp you have your initial outlay and then the maintenance of the valves and stuff but I think probably price wise those a Kemper and amp are certainly comparable um, I think the HX Stomp does tend to win on price generally uh, a Helix is probably right up there with the price of a, a, a a normal yeah. a normal kind of valve amp that's not a boutique but you know like a, a Fender Princeton or Deluxe Reverb these sorts of amps so price wise I'm not sure there's too much in it variety of tone I think is one where model is win um, so for instance I can dial in tones that are completely suitable for jazz and or metal with just this device with an amp like the California Tweed there's nothing within the amp that screams to me I can do metal uh, you'd have to add on another pedal or something the Mark 525 on the other hand probably could do metal quite comfortably I think the versatility does lie within these model is but then does that come at the cost of like one really good sound so like an amp might have one two three really good sounds really good tones um, and maybe that's why you choose an amp so then other consideration every modeler these days comes with a whole bunch of effects um, and these effects have been kind of steadily getting better um, I think some the Kemper delays and reverbs are some of the best going. The delays and reverbs on the Helix are also great. Some of the modulation and stuff I don't really use, so I'm not really a fair judge of that. But for instance, I used the chorus on the Eric Johnson video the other day, and that sounds good to my ears. So to be able to have that many different effects, if you wanted, you know, a drive pedal, a delay pedal, um, and a reverb. I guess you'd probably use the reverb on board of an amp, but again, I think the modelers win out in that case, unless if you were to equip a board with just, you know, a drive, delay, reverb, you'd easily probably come up to the cost of the HX Stomp just for effects. Um, and so that's another kind of consideration, unless you go for like a channel switching amp like the Mark 525. Um, an amp generally you'll need to have effects as well um, unless you're I guess a blues player or uh, quite a minimalist player I guess the, the fashionable thing is definitely to have a pedal board anyway uh, whether that's actually true or not is another thing I guess one of the other considerations is that now if you go to a wedding uh, or a function and turn up with an amp some people look at you like you flopped your dick out um, and it's a very strange kind of thing. For instance, I've been in conversations where they've asked, you know, are we doing a silent stage? Um, to me, I guess I fall kind of in line with, in line with uh, Mick Taylor of that pedal show on this. Uh, I don't really understand, you know, if you've got a drum kit on stage, um, an amp is generally not gonna be louder than a drum kit. I know obviously you've got the collective like group of sound, but um, to me there's no reason that you can't have an amp on stage which isn't blaringly loud and uh, obnoxiously uh, overkill but you know like a, a combo of this size um, a 45 50 watt uh, 30 watt even combo doesn't need to be so loud that uh, you're throwing off sound limiters and stuff so there's no reason really that I think you couldn't take an amp to every single gig um, for instance this I can take to a gig just as it is and it has the XLR out and I can turn off the speaker um, so to me I could take that to a gig and I have done this and that was a really enjoyable experience going direct which not all gigs are when you go direct um, so to me I could take that instead of a Kemper and still have a great time if it turns out that I'm allowed to use a cab on that gig as well, then that's a bonus. 
Another positive for the modelling side is that many of the modellers now, so the HX Stunt, the Helix, Podgo, uh, what else? Head rushes, I think, also are a built in sound card. So you can just take this alongside a laptop or something and you can go and record. Uh, so this is what I do when I go on holiday. Um, I'll take the HX Stomp and it means I can still do the creative stuff that I want to do. Um, so that's a benefit for a modeler. I wouldn't choose to take an amp away for that sort of thing, I don't think. For rehearsals as well, it's nice to have a modeler. You can just take it to a rehearsal room and just plug it into whatever they've got there. And generally, you know, you're not going to win competitions for your tone, but it's going to be good enough that you can get through a rehearsal. Um, so that's a benefit. You know, you might have to park away away from the space and then you'd have to carry a, a normal amp, which would be like a heavy thing. Yeah, I guess that's a space saving and weight. That's a factor in, in favour of modellers. The alternative to a modeller, I guess, that sits somewhere between an amp and, and modelling is, I think, stuff like what Origin Effects make. So they make these uh, revival drives, which can be used um, with a cab sim. And if you've got a digital analog kind of uh, competition going on in your head, I guess that would be an interesting area to look at. Um, and you could be sort of between both worlds. The other way that I think you can start to bridge the gap between both worlds is with things like the GFI Cabzeus. So uh, this just plugs between my amp and speaker and then it's got two XLR outs and I can send that to my audio interface or you know if I was out live send it to a desk I've not actually tried that yet but it's powered by 9 volt uh, 150 milliamps so it should just sit on a board nicely um, although it'll be by my amp so it won't sit on a board will it that's the kind of device you know and you've also got like I saw Rhett Scholl's video yesterday on the uh, UA Ox um, devices such as that or the Boss Tube Expander but I guess those things are going to cost about as much as your amp again or another modeler so for me if I had to choose between an aux or a tube expander and, an, uh, and a modeler I would definitely go for a modeler that's why I don't own any device that's you know a thousand pounds I did have a Fryat power station at one stage but I didn't use that much um, so for me the Cab Zeus is between two and three hundred pounds I think that's probably like the limit of how far I'd be willing to go down that route otherwise I think it's probably more cost effective just to get a modeler because I could get an HX stomp for 400 quid and what I would generally do is use that in parallel with a real amp and send the HX stomp to desk um, and that basically does the job for me. I've not really answered anything here, have I? So it was actually quite a difficult question and I'm really not sure how I would answer it. Um, when I look at an HX stomp, it doesn't uh, stimulate me as much as when I look at a nice valve amp, you know, Mezabugi in particular, I'm partial to. Um, I just think aesthetically they're pleasing items. Uh, they're great sounding items, a lot of them. There's amps that you won't love, but um, for instance, my friend Chris has just bought himself uh, two PV 5150s, and I think there's a level of joy and enjoyment that you'll get out of those that, let's be honest, like a, a model is not necessarily super sexy. It's it's practical, it's uh, it's a work tool. But you're never really going to stick that on a on a shelf and go, oh, that's super pretty. So I guess aesthetically, I think an amp kind of wins. I guess the the thing that we could come down to, uh, and the reason that you really would be having to make a decision between one or the other would be cost. So you can't necessarily afford both. So, an HX Stomp does everything that I need a modeler to do and is £400. Uh, a Helix, I don't know, is that about £1,200 at the moment? A Kemper is about 1600 I think. 
the Kemper, I would also need an audio interface with it. So that gets closer to probably £1,800 or something like that, I guess, if we're buying new. The Helix and the HX Stomp, I wouldn't need an audio interface with because they have that built in. So for the HX Stomp, we're looking at sort of £400 now. If you're then monitoring it, I guess you have to add in another three to five hundred pounds for a, a wedge. I'm not sure how else you'd do it. If I was then going to try and sound man proof my rig, I bought a little mixer so that I can use that to add back in the bass or whatever he's taken out of my tone. And that sort of did work a little bit. Um, so that's another hundred quid or so. So maybe five hundred ish the rig for the HX Stomp. Um, now, on the other hand, the amps, amps can range from, I guess you can get decent amps for about seven, eight hundred wood, the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, I guess, um, right the way up to sort of Mesa Boogies and Two Rocks, uh, where you can pay, you know, between two and three thousand. Um, and then you'd also have to factor in things like microphones. Uh, so this is a Aston Stealth which I think retails for £300. It's a British handmade one, a really cool mic. Um, but a nice mic does cost money again, so well, that would be costly. And then you've got an audio interface, which you'd have to factor in. The Mark 525, you don't need uh, a mic necessarily because you've got the cab clone out, which I think is actually fairly useful and you don't necessarily need to believe the uh, Anderton's reviews of it, which kind of did set Mesa Boogie back quite <laughs> a bit, I think. The cost factor, I think the HX Stomp and the Helix win that quite easily. Um, the enjoyment and the look factor, I think the amps win that quite easily. When you plug into an amp, the sound and the immediacy of Good tone is kind of obvious if it's an amp that works for you. With modelling it takes a bit more time to get you there. Hopefully you do arrive there, but uh, it's, it's a longer journey I think. So here's what I would do. If you're an amp person who's considering buying a pedal board and all that stuff, to me pedals came last in my kind of journey. So my journey went real amp. Um, I think, then uh, a Line 6 pod floorboard, uh, what was it, the XT Live. Um, and so I used to run things in full cable method. So I would suggest that if money is a real factor here and you're a pedal board person, I would suggest that you could use something like an HX Stomp or the Helix, if you can find one second hand or something, and that would easily be uh, comparable with the cost of like a pedal board if you've got factor in, you know, buying the actual board, powering it, uh, you know, do you have a driver delay, do you have a switcher, these things. I think uh, uh, a modeler like the HX Stomp or the Helix actually makes a better argument for existence than the pedal board. I know it's a little bit of a curveball, but I'm not sure there's that many people leave comments below if I'm completely wrong on this that would go out with just an amp without uh, effects and so I think if you do start to go down the pedal board route um, £400 doesn't get you necessarily that far you know you've got a power supply a board uh, and each pedal and a switcher potentially can even cost you up to about three, £400 um, all of the patch leads and all that stuff so I would say if money really is a factor, that I would have an HX Stomp and an Ezra Boogie uh, or a, a cheaper amp, which I, if I, money's a factor, you know, there's, well, I don't need to go through them, but there's other cheaper amps that will do a good job and still get you that, the thing which we like an amp for, which is that kind of, uh, I guess it's the feeling of having an amp in the room pushing low end around and uh, volume and these kind of things that we like real amps for. Uh, cool spring reverbs that sound awesome. You can still have that and 
uh, something that is giving you the the sounds that your pedalboard would, and then when you come home, you've got you know access to what I think is probably one of the best recording tools that there is. So that's what I would do if I was trying to decide between an amp and modelling. I couldn't decide basically is what I've just come to the conclusion in it. So that's a useless video in it. Um, anyway, so that's my thoughts. Maybe consider a, an HX Stomp as a replacement for a pedal board or a Helix if you've got a really expensive pedal board. Not even that expensive I guess. A normal pedal board can easily cost around a grand. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Pretty unsatisfying, isn't it? Thanks for watching. If you do the old like and subscribe stuff, that'd be helpful. And the sun coming through there. This is why the the lighting on this video is janky. Thanks for watching.